Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's episode we're going to cover removing ball joints and installing a new pair. And we're going to be doing this in a 2018 JLUR front axle. And removing the ball joints is pretty much going to be the same in just about anything. You use the same tools. We're going to run into a few pitfalls and I'll share that with you as well. So if you need new ball joints, and you need options, especially if you're running a JLU or a JT, stick around, I'll show you how to change them. This is Jeep and Mo. All right, so in order to get your ball joints off, get you a, a puller or a press. You can get these from your local auto parts store. They come with various diameter cups. And you can buy this, but Unless you're going to do a lot of ball joints or something, just rent it from your local auto parts. And I can only speak for O'Reilly's. O'Reilly's, you pay for it, and when you bring it back, you get your money back. I'm hoping I gotta heat this up. <clears throat> yeah, they're starting to come up. Now it's starting to break free. So I'm gonna spray a little PB blaster in there. To kind of lube it just a little bit let it run down in there there we go There's the top one. Now it's pretty cool. I got this little ratcheting attachment for, I think it's probably a Father's Day. You put it on a breaker bar and it turns it into a ratchet and it's made for a breaker bar. All right, so let's do the bottom. So when you weld your gussets on, on your C's, you want the ball joints out so you don't just fry them. Now I'll, I'll end up replacing them. All right, so to get the lower one off, put your adapter back on. Slide your cup in. Your screws got to go through the upper. And there it goes. Then there's your lower ball joint. All right, so you've seen us take out the ball joints. Now these are stock Dana Spicer ball joints that you get in the standard Dana 44 Rubicon front axle. Now they say that these have a plastic piece in there that keeps the ball tight in the joint and they're non-greasable. Now this is the 1st of August of 21. And there's only a couple, couple options for new ball joints. We welded on that truss onto that Rubicon axle. So if you weld it on sea gussets and everything, take your ball joints out, otherwise you'll cook them. Now Dynatrack has a set, but quite frankly, I couldn't go to $600 that, that they wanted for those ball joints. I know, I know you get what you pay for. I'm not saying they're not good ball joints. I'm sure they're the best. Spicer makes a heavy duty set of ball joints as well. These do have grease inserts in them. So you can grease these and they're all metal on metal. 
inside of there. And these actually were fairly easy to get a hold of, unlike some of the other components. So we bought these through Northridge. And I'll put these in a link. So when you buy any of these ball joints, you buy them as one set, which is one lower and one upper. So obviously you got to buy two sets. So let's get the axle ready for these and let's get them pressed in. Now since we painted this, obviously there's paint on the inside and you do not want that in there when you press these ball joints in. You want to make sure these are clean and bright. I don't use sandpaper. This is just Scotch-Brite. I'm going to take a little bit of acetone and I'm just going to clean that bore out and you want those to be shiny. And once again don't use sandpaper because you don't want to loosen up that fitment. You just don't want that paint in there to be making the press even tighter. Right, so do the upper and do the lower with a little acetone it comes out now you could always use you could always use uh, steel wool as well so do that and then just wipe them clean and we will use a little bit of lube on those ball joints when we press them in we don't want them to gall halfway through so we'll use just a little bit of bronze anti-seize. All right, you can see now it's nice and bright. Yeah, it messes up the paint a little bit, but that's okay. So they're all cleaned up. We got both sides all done ready for the ball joints. Now when you get these, take off this boot and then unscrew your grease fitting. That way you don't crush it. And I'm just gonna wipe off this diameter to make sure it's clean. And we'll get this lower one pressed in first. All right, first I'm gonna put just a little coating of anti-seize in this bore. I do not want these to gold when they go in. I'll brush just a little bit on the joint also. So what will happen is this will get pressed up in here and you have to do the lower one first. So these all come with cups. You get the appropriate size cup. They come with multiple cups. So obviously that cup's too small. You find the cup that that cup is borderline too big, but I think it'll work. We'll put the lower disc on it. We'll put the cup on it. Put the ball joint in there. And we'll put the press disc on top of the of the C or now the big thing is just make sure that when you're doing this that it's going in straight. You don't want to have it cockeyed. Yeah, I'm gonna use my breaker bar with that ratcheting attachment. And I'm just gonna Take it in just a little bit, just to get this thing started. And you can see it's not wanting to go in straight, so let's get this fixed.
cup is not letting it cup is just a little bit too big so we had to make a small spacer all the cups in here were either too big for the ball joint it was wanting to fall through it or too small to go over the ball itself in the boot so I we just rough cut a little little spacer so that when this goes on it allowed me to press and put that in there we went up and checked a couple of the other uh, ball joint presses they have and you know, none of them fit we'll put this right here and the screw goes through the upper obviously don't damage the upper so we're going to at least get it started before we put the receiving cup on it. Seems to go in fairly easy. Okay, we're going to back off again. I want to make sure we're not pulling a burr or anything. Now don't rush when you're doing this. What I'm looking for is, I'm looking around this ID. What I don't want to see is chips or like a rolled piece of metal or something coming out of it. It's part of the reason why I put the anti-seize in there so that it allow it to lube and not galled up halfway through. I didn't want to have to go to the knurled ball joints. Put that there. So that dude just bottomed out on me. Okay, so I'm bottomed out here. And with this press, there's not enough room to put the cup in there the way it's supposed to be. This cup is supposed to go in here. But quite frankly, there's not room There's not room for this cup and It's probably because I've got this shim in here All right, so we we'll have to Improvise a little bit All right, so what I'm just gonna do is Get a piece of metal, so we'll just when I'm watching it close up is where that flange goes even with the C. Here you can see we're flush up against the back of the C with that flange all the way around. So now we just got to do the tops. Now just to make sure that we got the right one, they label them for you. So, so we got to put some anti-seize in the bore here where we're going to press into. I'm going to put a little bit on the back side of this. We do not want this engulfing. One thing you'll see too is that the grease point's different on the upper versus the lower. The lower is going to take the needle style greaser, where the upper will take a standard grease fitting. Seems like I might have to trim my. Uh, A spacer possibly all right so we had to modify our shim a little bit 
so it'll fit up in here. So that'll work. Now this one you're going to need the tube almost instantly. I'm going to have to press it just a little bit without it. Because <clears throat> you have a grease insert that's going to poke through quickly. Make sure it's going in straight because it goes up inside of a counter bore on this side. Okay, so that bottomed out. Now we're going to have to put the cup on it. Now if you can find one that you don't got to use that shim on, or make a shim for, it'll be immensely easier. I don't think we're up in there all the way. The counter bore up here. I need to see how far that that'll sit up inside of there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to try without that spacer because it's still got to go up inside of there another eighth of an inch almost. I think once it's started, I think I think it'll be okay. And even at that, it wanted to, and that cup is marginally stuck. Okay, I got the cup off. It's all the way up in there. So if you got to do this, you have to find a, a kit made for a 2018 and above JL or JT ball joint. The cups need to be just a little bit smaller. And all the adapters I could find that they sell, none of those was going to work. So that was removing the old ball joints and putting in new ball joints. This is a 2018 and newer JL. It's gonna be pretty much the same if you're running the Dana 30 or the Dana 44. The ball joints will press in and out the same. And for the most part, just about anything with ball joints, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. Obviously the actual will change, but the method is the same. If you need to see how to break this down, I'll leave a link up here. I'll see in that video, it shows you how to pull the axles and the, the knuckles and everything off. If you enjoy this type of stuff, please remember to like, subscribe, and share it. And I'll see you on some of the other videos that pop up here. So if you're enjoying this build, continue to watch as we get this thing back together as we, and as we get the rear end back together. And as always, we appreciate you guys viewing, subscribing, and sharing. So it's in the garage, a show with a trail. I'll see you there. This is Jeeping Mo.